Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is your host Majestic speaking with another episode of Mech Warrior Online here. And today we're going to be going through a round with the Highlander 2C. Now a lot of you guys have been asking me, you know, now that the Highlander 2C has been out for quite some time now, have you messed around with any more builds, anything else other than what I originally took out probably a couple days within its release? into the game and I have been messing around with it as of recent after you guys had asked me that and I found a pretty decent build that I really do enjoy playing around with now it does cater to my play style but it also does mix in a lot of support and long range elements as well I'm sure that you can already see I'm um, pretty much what I did place on this thing so it does cater to pretty much a, a very multifaceted role out there on the battlefield now the Highlander 2C is a very very interesting assault mech especially in comparison to some of its other counterparts out there that seem like better options nowadays. You look at the Marauder 2C, it's very tanky, it's got a great alpha, it's got tons of, uh, you know, structure, it's just tanky. You've got the, the Direwolf, Atlases are always a great option, you have Maulers, Warhawks, Direwolves, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and you just don't see the Highlanders making it out there very much, especially... You know, they're just a very unique mech, and they have a lot to offer, but it does it does have to be in the right hands. In other words, not mine. So, really, you just have to mess around with it, kind of pick and choose your spots, figure out what kind of loadout is suitable for you. It's a very, very interesting setup on this mech, especially where all the hard points are located. I feel like that's half of where the... the, uh, the unappealing side uh, to to the Highlander 2C comes from is because like all the hard points and everything are kind of scattered across it you kind of have to really picture where your shots are going and what you're shooting and what's available to you and it's a constant reminder even for me you know normally there's a large concentration or focus fire on certain components of the mech that cater to specific hard points or weapons or anything like that but the Highlander 2C kind of has, has it all scattered all over the place. And it's not an Omni-Mech. It's a clan mech, but it is not an Omni-Mech. So that's another thing that kind of draws away from, uh, you know, making this a viable and appealing option to take out there for an Assault Mech on the battlefield. So it doesn't get a lot of love, but we're going to shed some light back on this guy today because it is, uh, you know, to me, I really do like the Highlander chassis overall, whether you're talking Intersphere or whether you're talking the 2C variants. I, I really do appreciate this mech every single time I have taken out there on the battlefield. Um, and as you can see, aesthetically, I put on, uh, you know, the Cameron's Highlander uh, patch up there on the right shoulder. I also put it on uh, the right ass cheek. And then <laughs> I put the, uh, you know, uh, my uh, my favorite number is eight. So I put that on the back shoulder. And uh, I forget what patch that is or the, the decal that is, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool looking. Um, and really, I just wanted to make this thing kind of look uh, pretty interesting and kind of stick to the theme, you know, the Scottish theme of the Highlander and everything like that. So I kind of wanted to just mess around with it, see if I could come up with a viable build that I've been enjoying. And I think I finally have. And now this build is definitely multifaceted. And I don't normally take out builds like this. So it's definitely kind of a more interesting approach that I'm taking to this video today. And I hope you guys appreciate that just because it does mix in elements of long range support and brawl so you know you really have a very unique mech here uh, from an assault perspective that can help in all stages of the game and what I uh, you know first if we take a look at the overview of what this guy has to offer we have one ballistic three energy three missile one AMS and zero ECM as for the quirk summary we, you have acceleration deceleration rates of 45% which is pretty decent um, it also has a lot of armor and structure bonus so altogether you know it is pretty tanky especially for a clan mech so, so even these quirks, you don't see a lot of quirks on the clan mechs, but in this particular case, it doesn't have any weapon quirks, but it does have a lot to offer from the standpoint of, you know, structure and armor, which you definitely don't really see that much because a lot of times when you think of clan mechs, you tend to see them as being as overpowered and tanky and really buffed up and everything like that. Which I think, you know, PGI can do a little, uh, you know, rebalancing to make this a little more fair for the Inner Sphere. But this guy does have that attribute. It does have some structure and armor bonuses that I really feel um, are, are critical, even. Um, especially to make this a viable option on the battlefield. So... If we take a look at what I actually placed on the guy. So here we go. That one ballistic card point, I really wanted to pack a punch with it. So as you can see, I placed an LB20 on there in that right arm. So it's that big cannon in the right arm. 
really deals a big punch once you get uh, really close in proximity to your targets. And then coupling that with SRM6s, I have, you have one SRM6 in the right torso, and then the other two SRM6s in the left arm. So definitely a very interesting, unique setup. And that's what I meant by the, the hard points are kind of scattered. It's not like you have three missile hard points in the left torso and you stack them on top of each other and it's one full salvo out of one specific, uh, you know, uh, component on the mech. They're coming from all over the place. So you really have to kind of expose this mech if you do want to get a full salvo. Um, you have to really maneuver your way into the right position in order to make sure that you do get your shots down. Um, it does have the, again, all these armor and structure bonuses, which really cater to it nicely um, but it, uh, it also had those two en or three energy uh, hard points in the left torso and how I decided to work with it is I wanted to place some long range weapons in there I, wa I wanted to provide some support early on in the match um, you know if we do happen to push up and I do see that you know we need some support on the front lines I can easily switch back over to, to brawly skirmish support mode with the LB20 and the uh, and the three SRM sixes so even if it's suppression damage or anything amplification damage in the beginning with those ERPPCs, it kind of, again, places a lot of different roles into one, which really make this mech unique. So, as you can see, I placed the LB20 on there, the two ERPPCs, and three SRM6s with Artemis. So, the only thing that I'm not using is that extra energy hard point, um, simply because I wanted to stick to PPCs, see how that worked out, and uh, and really provide an amplification kind of role from, from distance. Um, if we do decide to go ro long range, especially in the early stages of the map or uh, the match, and then I filled in the rest of it with LB20X ammo, and uh, so I put four tons of LB20X ammo. That's 28 shots, and then two tons of SRM6 uh, ammo in there, so that's 200 shots. And then I placed two jump jets, class one jump jets, in there. So you know you can fit a couple jump jets in here. And I, I decided to go with it. So, um, you know, I did place them in there. So this thing is jump jet capable in order to get over some, you know, not not a hills, like massive hills or anything like that. But, you know, if you get stuck on rocks or on an incline or something like that, this thing will definitely make it into, uh, into the ground that you're looking to get to. So... And then I just packed the rest of it with heat sinks. I mean, I filled up the engine, I filled up the, the right torso and the left torso. It has an XL325 engine in there. That is a Clan XL engine. So we don't have to worry about whether, you know, if our torso gets blown off, dying. So, you know, if it does get blown off, we do lose, uh, you know, some speed. Um, but we do not actually die. So whatever torso gets blown off, I do still have firepower on the other side of the mech. So that's another benefit to having this mech on the battlefield is even if you lose a torso, you still have roughly almost half of your, uh, half of your firepower remaining. Not quite, but just about. And I did fill 90 out of 90 tons. It's a 90 ton assault mech and I filled up all 90 tons, 78 out of 78 slots, 544 out of 558 armor. The only places that I took armor off on this mech were the right and left leg, and the, I took six armor out of each leg, and then two out of the head. So that's where the 14 armor is coming off. It has a 1.17 heat management ratio, and I know what you're thinking, but you usually keep a 1.2 management heat, heat ratio. And yes, that's technically true. I do. I, I normally do keep a, a heat management ratio of above 1.2, but I know that the ERPPCs in particular give off an astronomical amount of heat. So when chain firing them, it doesn't really factor in as much as you would think. And if you do couple that with a full alpha and everything, it does spike the heat, obviously, from ghost heat and everything like that, but it really is very manageable, especially when you couple it with 18 double heat sinks. So I've really been messing with this build for a long time, seeing how viable it was, if, I, if it did fit into somewhere on the battlefield in a particular schema, and I'm really, really liking how this one came out. 76-point alpha, so it's got a pretty uh, strong alpha there. 62.9 kph, so 63 kph um, with speed tweak. This is a mastered mech and a jump distance of 12.7. So it definitely has all the bells and whistles that I was looking for. Filled up all the armor, uh, or all the, not the, all the armor. Filled up all of the hard points, filled up all of the tonnage, all the slots, everything. This thing is loaded to the T. Now, if I look at the modules that I placed on it, advanced seismic sensor and radar deprivation, absolutely critical you need to be able to duck back into cover if you take this guy out 
uh, on the battlefield, it just it, you need to hide if <laughs> because going 63 kph, you're still going very slow, and you need to be able to uh, be out of your opponent's sight if you do duck into cover. Advanced seismic sensor, 250 meters in the advanced seismic sensor, just so I can detect anything that's close to me. And the weapon modules that I decided to go with were the LB20X uh, cooldown and the uh, SRM6 cooldown, along with a cool shot 9x9 and a cool shot 6. So that is what's going to be helping me, just in case my heat does spike. I really wanted to focus in on that heat. The Cool Shot 6 doesn't really do much, but it can kind of prevent you from, uh, you know, hitting that, that heat threshold on this mech and allow you to chain fire through some of your other weapons without overheating. That's the reason why I decided to go double Cool Shot on this build. And it also mixed it up a little bit, apart from the UAV, you know, Arty Strike or Air Strike kind of... Uh, original setup so with that being said i think it's now time to hit the battlefield we're going to take this guy out and see exactly how it performs on the battlefield if you if you do agree or you like the video if you like the build so far definitely hit that like button but i think it's about that time we hit the battlefield so you can see how this beast actually performs out there on the battlefield here we go all righty guys here we go first round is going to take place on tourmaline desert long range very hot map. I wouldn't be surprised if we overheated probably a couple times given a, given a couple full alphas in sequence. And even after just those two of, uh, PPCs shooting, you're about 40% or so, if and then really you see the two more there, puts or, us to 70. You know, it does cool down, and then a third salvo puts us no in the 90s, so we can only us. afford to really do three do shots with two PPCs at a time before we do need to cool down. Now, the heat dissipation is very nice on this mech with 18 double heat sinks, so we know that we can afford to if we do have sufficient cooldown time between our shots. So. I'm not really too worried about it from that standpoint. What I'm worried about is if we do get into close range combat, how it's going to work out with the rest of the weapons if we do want to put a full alpha into them. And then hopefully get, getting to that point where we can, you know, pop those cool shots and keep ourselves cool enough so that we can fire off maybe a couple alphas in sequence. Now, as you can hear over comms, everyone is, uh, you know, kind of grouping up, trying to just figure out where they're headed. Probably go heading towards Death Valley, if I had to guess. And we're just going to take our way up into the fortress here. This is the fortress. So it's this uh, below where you're at, Raven. encasing, Thanks, I guess sir. you could say, around us that they consider the fortress on Tourmaline Desert. In case any of you guys hear that as a reference. Now, just peeking out over here on the lookout tower, just trying to see if we can figure out exactly where they're going. I'm not seeing anyone off in the distance in either direction. So we're gonna just try and navigate our way. way Hopefully around, I, I did see some laser fire there, so I'm not really it's sure where they're shooting at. Maybe there right. is a no, large no band of them that already the went through Death, Death Valley. I see an assault out there. Yeah, he's saying he's seeing an assault out there off near that, uh, that Echo 7 line. So I'm guessing we're just gonna whip our way around here. We don't wanna get caught in the back here. We want to stay pretty close to the team, especially as an assault. You don't want to leave the rest of your group. They yeah, are waiting go. for the us, so here, it's only right to, uh, you know, we'll accompany them as long as we possibly well, can. Really but we don't want a NASCAR we either. We don't line. want to switch spots with them because yeah, Death Valley is down. really only an ideal area, location so. if you have two or three we mechs that are over there, kind of serving as a distraction while the rest of your team pushes in. Just a little bit of map tactics there, but that's beside the point. We're going to try and focus up if we can stick around the fortress here so we do have some friendlies with us we are getting some ppc fire from behind us probably a light if i had to guess able to get back there with that speed and a lot of their team actually is focusing up over here so i'm kind of curious to see how this pans out now we're going to peek our way around here towards uh delta six just whip around the corner really quick and there's a bushwhacker right here in front of us he's going to take two ppcs trying to slow his roll there he does realize that a couple of us are over here we're going to back uh, up at, into smoke. one of the, behind one of the fortress walls firing two ppcs on that other bushwhacker and again he, it looks like he's probably going to retreat as well now we are accompanied by our own friendly bushwhacker. It looks like he's just kind of doing a little bit of oversight. We have a Marauder 2C. I'm not sure who put down that airstrike, 
but we're not going to take any chances. We did hide under one of the fortress walls, so we didn't take any damage from that. Now, I am a little nervous here. That is a Scorch. If he does look up here, we might be in trouble because he definitely probably has a Brawl build, and he turned away, so that gives us a huge opportunity to put some damage in on his left side. I'm not really sure why he didn't look at us when he was going across the pass here. Very, very interesting as to why he didn't do that, but that gave us a huge shot to put some damage down. This linebacker is trying to peek over, so we did get some damage down on him. Our Locust is helping put some amplification damage down on him as well, and now we're just going to try and hold this position. If you can see on the map, they're kind of split, and my team is kind of split. This Phoenix Hawk did look in on the pass here. We were able to put some damage down on him, but it looks like just based off seismic, they are right next to us over here in Delta 6. This Phoenix Hawk is peeking in again. I don't have the angle on him. If I can get a partial alpha, I will. Looks like he's trying to get angles on me. I did get partial shots in on him, but we do have to be careful as to exactly where this guy is headed. We're not going to turn our back on him because if we do and he comes up the pass, we are going to have our back turned to him. Don't want to get caught up, and he still looks like he might be over here. There he is, full alpha into that chest, and we won't be able to reload again, but my team is able to take him out. So now it's four to four, and we haven't even hit the 10 minute mark now we're gonna whip around into the other side of the bowl here so to see if there's anything in lagging here in the back and a highlander 2c is in front of us we put two ppc shots into that chest and he's gonna try and back up with the rest of his team gonna look back into the fortress now we have a grasshopper danger zone right here he is pretty heavily loaded he did overheat though so we get a full shot into his chest Followed up by one PPC, and we did get that kill. So huge shot for our team. We did have an overheat, but this Highlander looks like he's still trying to get away from the rest of my team that looks to be flanking in on his right. And we were able to take off those two UAC 10s. I did overheat putting an Alpha into him. We are completely out of SRM ammo at this point. Just using that LB20 and the two PPCs. Very, very heat intensive weapons. We did overheat yet again. And we probably might even again if it does come to that. But it looks like he overheated and he's still alive. How is this guy still alive? We're going to put another Alpha into his chest with what is remaining. It looks like he's trying to circle around us, but my team is able to rally around me, amplify that damage that into his back, and it looks like his center torso was the result of his death. So we're just focusing up on this last enemy here. He is legged, that Arctic Cheetah. He's trying to run away. All small pulse lasers, so we don't even have to worry about getting any sort of damage from long range. Should be just a couple of seconds now. It looks like he's going to try and dive into the mini bowl here. Did put a couple shots into him. I thought I would have got him on that last leg. He did have that leg cord, and we did put two PPCs into it, but my team is able to clean it up. So that should do it for the end of this round. Let's check out the scores here. 12 to 6 was your final. One kill, eight assists, 791 damage with two components destroyed. Very interesting result to this match. Uh, I didn't expect to get into a short range kind of, uh, you know, gameplay there in the fortress, but we did happen to capitalize on it. We did get the win. 791 damage did lead the team. But you know what? I'm going to hop back into the queue. I had so much fun. Let's go through another round. Here we go. Alrighty guys, here we go. Second round is going to take place on HPG right. Manifold. Now, very interesting map for this particular mech and this particular build. Now, what I'm going to hope for here is to get some long-range PPC suppressive fire in from the beginning. Try and scare them off, anyone that might be trying to come around on one of the flanks, because this map is technically kind of close range in the beginning. You know, we're coming out of this entrance, and our opponents are coming out of the far entrance. Either way, there is the possibility for some trade fire here, so hopefully we don't NASCAR and, uh, you know, chase off after them because I know I will get left behind at 63 kph. Now, looking over there, we have two targets, that Raven, and then one thing off, one guy off in the distance there just sent a salvo in that direction, didn't connect with anything, but, you know, definitely hoping to kind of spook them off in that uh, back towards the rest of their team. Now, we're trying to focus up on this Jenner. Very shifty mech there. Missed on the first salvo of PPCs, connected on the second salvo, and with that LB-20X, so... 
Now it looks like the rest of my team is going to be able to clean him up pretty quickly, so that would be a quick kill for our team. There he goes, so just over the one minute mark, we do have our first kill, and it is one of their lights, so definitely a beneficial uh, kill for our team this early on. Now we're going to peer across here. We have Charlie, this mad dog. Looks like he's going to run across the open. Going to try and just swing a little bit right under the pathway here. Now those PPCs are a little low mounted, so they did go right into the manifold there. Wasn't able to connect. The LB20X did connect, and then another salvo with those PPCs. Unfortunately, we did miss again, trying to lead the targets there. A little too quick for us, so we didn't get a full shot off, but we are whipping around here trying to get a flank on the rest of their team. So we're trying to just get ourselves into a position to amplify and support the rest of our team. Full salvo into this Banshee right in front of us. He had no idea that we were right there, but we are gonna back up. So we'll take our shot, retreat, so we know that we won that trade. Just peering over, seeing what, exactly what their team is doing, trying to put some focus down on the Shadowhawk in front of us, but we are getting targeted by that Huntsman, and we're also receiving some artillery fire. Thank God we have a teammate with AMS there, because he did take off some of that focus with AMS so that was great on our team now if we can seal off the flank here that would be great because that would be a huge distraction for the enemy and allow our team to move up right in front of us here we have a Marauder 2C full salvo right into his chest our team is helping amplify the damage and they do wind up getting that kill so that is a huge kill for our team that Marauder 2C was left behind by the rest of his team now we are focusing up on that Shadowhawk looks like he's going into the corner but he is accompanied by an assault so we're gonna pop up here with our jump jets try and get a full salvo into his chest he's still standing looks like he's lipping here gonna amplify that damage and finally it looks like our team is able to wrap it up we're getting some fire in the corner here from the Shadowhawk looks like he's just putting down some AC2 fire from what I could tell another full salvo hopefully into his chest and there he goes so we are able to wrap it up and get that kill shot this banshee here in front of us looks like it, he does not want to stick around too long he is getting targeted by me and the rest of some of my friendlies we are getting focused though on our right side so we have a couple limited options here we can go face tank into the rest of their team over there but I think I have some better ideas here we're gonna hop into the basement try and get this guy down full salvo into that chest we were able to core up his right torso and now he's doing a fantastic job protecting his vitals with that left side he juked me out there hit that circle button on the joystick and we gave him a partial alpha but then we finish off with the rest of our weapons overheat he shoots into my chest and I return fire and and get the kills so that was a huge shot on our part I am left with a cherry red torso look at that thing it's probably one hit and all we're left with at this point are two PPCs and our LB 20x this huntsman has no idea we're behind him two PPCs into his back and he goes down now we're just trying to scout around stay behind the wall here so we don't take any unnecessary fire put two more PPC shots into that crab and he's gonna get off of our screen there probably into one of our friendlies here I know no I can turn the corner and that Hellbringer was right in front of us and he is able to take us down. So hopefully the rest of our team can wrap up the rest of this match. We're gonna spec in on this Atlas DDC. Now that Crab is back seconds from death here. Big Alpha from the Atlas DDC and he goes down in a flash. So there are probably maybe two or three opponents left at this point. We're gonna keep specking the DDC unless we find one of our friendlies is closer. And yeah, it looks like this Warhammer is probably going to get the last licks on that Cheetah. If he whips around that corner there, yeah, we're going to switch over to him. Big Alpha, four large pulse lasers. Not sure if they all connected, but those sure did. And there he goes. So now I think they're down to their last mech, this Adder right in front of us. Bad overheat by the 6D, and this Adder is trying to charge in and get a quick kill on him. Another full Alpha from the 6D. He's trying to get that final kill shot. But my team, that DDC again, he's back, and he is able to wrap up the rest of this match. Fantastic result here. Clutch play from the rest of the team being able to wrap up these final few opponents. Round stats, three kills, six assists, 931 damage with six components destroyed. Great ending result here on my favorite map here in HPG Manifold. We did top the leaderboards, but that's going to do it for this episode of Mech Warrior Online. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know you were waiting a while for this Highlander 2C video to come out, so I hope it was worth the wait. But thank you guys so much again for tuning into this episode. If you liked the video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, check out the links in the description, leave any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions below, and I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Take care, guys.